we're diabetic, and so many people are diabetic, is another example of where the design seems to have been frankly flawed. So is there an evolutionary explanation for that? Well, the suggestion was that to explain how the dolphins became that way, resistant to insulin, is that they have a switch. And they had a switch because the ancestors, way back, who may be allied to the ancestors of hippos, which I think surprised you when you looked at um, that, that line of things. I always thought it might have been bears, but still, um, maybe both. That when they went from land into the water 55 million years ago, they turned to fish. In other words, they had more and more protein, less and less carbohydrate, less need for the insulin. And so that brings a kind of parallel to us, strangely enough, who apparently during one of the last ice ages, maybe one going about 20,000 years, we too tended to go only to protein because all the carbohydrate was frozen or something. You can see apparently parallels with Eskimos. And so what they're doing is looking at ways in which this fantastically adaptive system in the dolphin, which can switch in a matter of hours to deal with sugar, could be still somewhere in the software and could be exploited in people to work out ways in which there are parallels. The final example she gave of ways in which we kind of cross over is both have big brains and both need highly packed glucose to be carried in our blood systems. And so the parallels might be even further than uh, expected. Is this one of the delicious things that keeps coming up as you look into the history of different animals, how the parallels keep coming out? Well, certainly parallels keep coming up. I'm, I'm not familiar with that work. Where, where, where's that published? Um, I'm not sure yet, yeah. so I shall look it up. Okay. But uh, we've got a paper somewhere. Um, I mean, I, th I think there are fascinating parallels, and, and they are um, extremely illuminating, and what's one of the, one of the benefits of studying evolution, um, that, that we can actually learn from, from things, and the idea of, of there being software recipes lurking away and, and ready to be, to be used is a, is a fascinating one, yes. Yeah. Two questions on that. One of them is um, to do with what you said about Darwin. I didn't actually see it so much in, in this book, you said there are five bridges to greatness in understanding how evolution actually works. And that Darwin probably did four, but he missed out on the digital revolution, but he nearly got there because he explained that we don't necessarily have blended sexes. In other words, it's one thing or the other. It's naught or it's one. It's male or it's female, normally. Darwin was astonishingly prescient in this. I mean, it's always said that... Darwin got everything right except genetics, and he completely um, ballsed up genetics, which is sort of true. But um, because he was a man of his time, and in his time people believed in blending inheritance, and they believed that um, each person, each individual, is a kind of mixture of its mother and its father, rather like mixing two, two substances. And nowadays we know, of course, that uh, well, ever since Mendel, we've known that it, that it doesn't blend. It's kind of digital in the sense that a gene is either there or it isn't. And then with Watson and Crick and DNA, it's mightily digital. It's digital. Every little detail is digital. Uh, Darwin, of course, would have had no conception of that. But what Robin's referring to is that Darwin came very, very close to getting Mendel's laws. And it's always said that Mendel, who, th who got the idea that genes are either there or, or not there and showed it with his various experiments on peas and other things, if only Darwin had read Mendel, then he would have got out of a very difficult bind because under the laws of uh, blending inheritance, which everybody believed in except Mendel, natural selection couldn't work because there wouldn't be enough genetic variation for natural selection to work on. The under extreme blending inheritance, the variation is halved in every generation. So you need massive mutation rates in order to allow selection to take place. Mendel completely solved that, uh, or it was later realized that Mendel had completely solved it. But what's intriguing is that if you look at some of Darwin's unpublished writings, his letters, you see that he came very, very close to it. And uh, he alludes to some experiments that he had, had done actually on peas, 
which was Mendel's experimental 